Hi guys, Northern Oklahoma College. This is College Algebra, Math 1513. I'm on Chapter 3, Section 1. Uh, more about dividing polynomials. Uh, we're going to divide polynomials using synthetic division. On the video before this, we used long division, and it's a huge hassle, and it's hard to do. So synthetic division does the same thing, but it's easier. We're also going to learn about the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. It's all part of the synthetic division. Okay, to do uh, synthetic division, I want to go back to the previous video uh, where we worked a couple of those problems with long division. We're going to do the same problems with synthetic division. I'm going to show you how much easier it is. The first thing we have to remember is that 4, whatever is being subtracted from x, that's our root or our 0. Okay, whatever is being subtracted by 4 or, or whatever is being subtracted from x, that's going to turn out to be our root or 0 as long as our remainder is zero. Hey, guess what? That is the factor theorem. We're getting ready to talk about that anyway. If your remainder is zero, that means you found a zero or a root or an x-intercept. Now, where did you find it? Well, you divided something, whatever that was, you divided it by x minus c. And that C is your root, or your zero, okay? In this case, it was 4. It's whatever is being subtracted from the X. That's going to be your root, or your zero. So if you have a remainder of zero, you found a zero. You found a root. Okay, synthetic division does the same thing as long division. It, doesn't, it just doesn't use all the Xs. It uses the numbers in front of the Xs. It uses the coefficients. The coefficient of X squared is 1. The coefficient of x is negative 2, and then we have a constant of negative 8. That's the only numbers that synthetic division uses. So they're going to use the 1, the negative 2, and the negative 8. And then they're going to put a little box right here. And what are they going to put right there? They're going to put the 0, or root, that you're testing. We are testing the number 4. Now how do we start the process? We draw a little equals line there. We bring that first number down, okay? That's how we start the process. Bring that first number down. And then after that, it's just a multiply and add process. So we're going to multiply the 4 times the 1. That's 4. And then add the 4 to the negative 2. That's 2. Then we're going to multiply the 4 times the 2. That's 8. And add the 8 to the negative 8. That's 0. Now what do we have? What does our answer mean? The 0, that's our remainder. Now, since our remainder is 0, what does that mean? That means that, yes, indeed, 4 is a 0 or a root, that we found a root. We found a 0. The number 2, that's going to be our constant. That's going to be our number. And the number 1, that's going to be the coefficient of our x term. So let's write our answer now that we know what all the pieces are. We have 1x plus 2, our constant, plus remainder, I'll abbreviate here, remainder 0. Okay? A simpler way of writing that is just x plus 2. That's going to be our answer. So when I divide, look back up here, when I divide x squared minus 2x minus 8 by x minus 4, I get x plus 2. So x squared minus 2x minus 8 divided by x minus 4 equals x plus 2. Or, x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals x minus 4 times x plus 2. And notice, since our remainder was 0, that means we have a root, or a 0, of 4. Now, by the way, we also found that other root. That root is negative 2, because remember, it's the number subtracted from the x. x plus 2 would be the same thing as x minus negative 2. So my negative 2 would actually be my root. What about this one from the previous video? You remember doing uh, long division and having to deal with this monster and using like a half a page of paper to get this answer? All right, let's figure out how to get the same answer using synthetic division in just a couple lines of paper. The first thing we have to do is we have to think x minus, x minus something. So how could I rewrite this as x minus something? Well, x plus 4 is really x minus negative 4. That's another way of rewriting it. So let's think x 
minus negative 4 instead of x plus 4 because that's going to be the number that we use in our synthetic division. So negative 4 goes in our box. We're just going to use the 6 and the 15 and the negative 8 and the 2. We're going to leave, leave a little room for work here and draw our equals line. Now to start the process, we bring that 6 down. That starts it. And then after that, it's just multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. So negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. Add that to the 15, we get negative 9. Negative 4 times negative 9 is positive 36. Add that to the negative 8, we get positive 28. And negative 4 times 28 is negative 112. Add that to the 2, we get negative 110. Now what does our answer mean? What are those four numbers here in the bottom, what do those four numbers mean? Well, take a look at these four numbers up here. Remember our answer that we got using long division? We have the same answer using like three lines of paper in synthetic division. We just have to know how to interpret our answer. Remember, negative uh, 110 is our remainder. The next number will be your constant. And then the rest of the numbers are going to be your x, your x squared, your x cubed, your x4. The uh, exponent just keeps getting bigger as we go further to the left. And so we come up with an answer of 6x squared minus 9x plus 28 minus 110 over x plus 4. Now, let's use the uh, factor theorem. Did we have a remainder of 0? No, we did not. So what does that mean? That means we did not find a root not a zero it's not a zero so negative four did not go in evenly it didn't have a remainder of zero that means it's not a zero but we can use some information from this uh, we know it's not a zero we know it's not a root not a x-intercept but uh, another theorem we need to talk about is the uh, remainder theorem Okay, remember the factor theorem says if the remainder is zero, you have found a zero. You found a root. But what if the remainder was not zero? The remainder theorem says, uh, now remember this is not technical uh, textbook language. I'm just putting it in my own words. The remainder theorem says if the remainder is not zero, well, you didn't find a root, but, but you did find a point on the curve, all right? We were looking for roots, basically. We like finding roots. But even if we didn't find a root, we can at least find a point on the curve. Let me show you an example. Let's look at the function 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 2. And let's, uh, let's test a couple values and see if they're roots. So let's uh, test the values 1 half and negative 2. Let's see if they're x-intercepts or roots or zeros. So for the first problem, think, is 1 half a root? So we're thinking, is x minus 1 half? A factor. Okay, so we are going to test one half. We're going to put that in using synthetic division and see if it goes in evenly with a zero remainder. If it does go in evenly with a zero remainder, we know that we found a root or a zero. So I write down my coefficients, my two, three, two, and my constant of negative two, and I'm checking the number one half. So I put one half in the box, I bring the two down, and I start my multiply and add process. One half times two is one, add it to the three, you get four. One half of four is two, add it to the two, you get four. One half of four is two, add it to the negative two, and you get zero, zero. Now, what have we figured out? Hey, there's our remainder. Our remainder is zero, so what did we just find? I found that x squared has a coefficient of 2, x has a coefficient of positive 4, and my constant is positive 4. And I know that x minus 1 half will divide evenly into our original function here. So I know our original function divided by x minus 1 half equals this right here. I know that 1 half is a root. I know that 1 half is a 0. So on my graph, whatever it may look like, I know that about one half to the right on the x-axis, I know that I have an x-intercept or a zero or a root there. All right, how about we try the other one, negative two. Now remember to think, is x minus negative two a factor? And negative two is what we're gonna divide by. So let's put negative two in our box. Let's draw our line. 
bring down the first term, and let's multiply and add. So multiply, we get negative 4, add, we get negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, add, we get positive 4. Multiply negative 2 times 4, we get negative 8, add, we get negative 10. What did we find out? We found out our remainder does not equal 0. That means we did not find a 0. But we can still use this information. What did we find? Well, we know that 4 is my constant, and it's positive. I know that my 1 has an x. I know that my 2 has an x squared. So I have 2x squared minus 1x plus 4 minus 10 over whatever I was dividing by, which is x minus negative 2, or in other words, x plus 2. So I know that's my answer. I know I didn't find a root or a 0. But the remainder theorem tells us that even if we didn't find a root, what we did find was what the y-coordinate of negative 2 is if we run that through our function. So our remainder was negative 10. We found out that when we run negative 2 through the function, we get negative 10. In other words, the point negative 2, negative 10 is on our curve. And negative 2, negative 10 is going to go off our graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but it's way down here. So we know that our curve is going to look something like that. We didn't find a root, we didn't find a zero, but we did find a point on the curve. Okay, we got a little time left here. Let's work a few more with synthetic division. Here's an example of a problem. They want you to divide 6x cubed minus 4x squared plus 17 divided by x plus 3, and they want to see what you get. All right. We're going to set it up using synthetic division, but notice that something is missing first. Be sure to always check your exponents to make sure that you're not missing an x. And we saw that we were missing a plain x, an x to the first power. You can put a 1 up there if you want to. You don't have to. So I have to insert a plus 0x so that I have all my spaces correct. Okay, that means we set it up with 6, negative 4, 0, and 17. What do I put in the box? Well, I have to think x minus something. Well, what would that be? That would be x minus negative 3. And negative 3 is what's going to go in the box. So negative 3. Now you guys pause the video and see if you can finish the problem. There's what I got for the division. Now what does our answer mean? 6x squared minus 22x plus 66 minus 181 over what? Over what we were dividing by. x plus 3. Okay, did we find a root or a zero? No, we didn't. Okay, we had a remainder left over, so no, we didn't find a root. But we did come up with an answer. And it didn't take near as long as long division does. Okay, what about this? Use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find P of C. And here's your function and here's your C. Here's your number they're asking about. They're, they're telling you this is not a root. They're saying it's not a zero, it's not a root. But I want you to tell me when x, or they call it c, when c is negative 4, what is p of c? Okay, they're basically saying, if I give you the x, what's the y? Alright, and we can find that using synthetic division. Now remember, they're missing some terms here. We're missing some x's. I see an x to the fifth, and I see an x squared. What about all those other x's? So put in all those missing x's, and now set up your synthetic division. And we are testing negative 4. We know it's not a root, but uh, we want to see uh, uh, what the y-coordinate will be if we put in negative 4. All right, pause the video, get an answer. Let's see if we match. Man, I hope you guys caught that mistake, because I did not. I missed an x. Let's try it again. And you can tell I'm getting tired, because that's supposed to be a 0x. Okay, I finally got the right answer. This is our remainder. We know we didn't find a root, but we did find the y value that matches up with negative 4. So when they say find p of c, they want to know what p of negative 4 is. And we found out that's negative 705. So that's our answer. Uh, another way of thinking about it is we found the point negative 4, negative 705. Okay, one more real quick. Use synthetic division and the factor theorem to determine if x minus 3 is a factor of that polynomial. And here it is set up. And yes, it is, because our remainder is 0, so it goes in evenly.